Hi there, this is the GCSE PE Anatomy and Physiology slideshow for the skeletal system. Here's the question. One of the functions of the skeletal system is protection. Explain how the musculoskeletal system enables movement. So we are going to go through what the command word is, the topic and the focus. We're going to break it down and show you how to structure that perfect answer. We're going to go through on the left hand side the ideas framework to build up um, the answers and make sure that you detail your knowledge accordingly. And then we're going to use the connective words as well. So have a look at the yellow box. The yellow box is important. Um, you need to be able to know those connective words and be able to justify your answer for the AO3 marking system, which we'll come on to later. Musculoskeletal system then. So let's have a look and look at the revision um, topic for this area. So we know that muscles or well, the musculo is to do with muscles, skeletal is to do with the skeleton and the bones. Just, just so you know, um, you need to know the functions of the skeletal system and you should know that the one that we're looking at today is movement, but the others are support, so to keep you solid and rigid and upright. We've got protection, so you must make sure that bones protect the body's vital organs so the cranium for example protects your brain movement we're going to look at that in in detail so i'm not going to i'm not going to um, waste your time there now structural shape and points for attachment so it gives us the shape and our height so if you're like me you're tiny i've got small small bones i have i have um short leg bones and i have a short vertebrae so i am nice and short but if you're lucky enough to be nice and tall then you will have longer leg bones and a larger vertebrae Mineral storage as well, so bone stores several minerals, so we know that calcium is important here, um, and blood cell production, so we it, it, prov um, it provides us red blood cells, and red blood cells carry oxygen, okay, we also need white blood cells to fight off infection, alright, so that's a general gist of the functions, let's move on to the one in particular that we're looking at today, which is movement. So if you come on to here, let's have a look. We're looking at tendons and we need to know the link between the musculoskeletal system. And the link here is tendons. Tendons attach muscle to bone. And look here, look. If you count the letters, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm a genius, aren't I? 10, 10 letters, it must be a tendon. OK, so tendons attach muscle to bone and when the, bo uh, when the muscle contracts, it pulls on the bone and boom shakalaka, you have movement. OK, let's move, move down one. We're going to ligaments and that is not a spelling mistake, but just make sure you do put a G. Um, for this reason, I've put it as an eight. OK, ligaments attach bone to bone. And guess what? Same thing again. You've got eight letters bone to bone. I know. Good, right? And then the last, the last one that we need to talk about, and I haven't mentioned on the PowerPoint, is cartilage. Cartilage is between the bones and it prevents grinding. Grinding of the bones so it enables pain, smooth, free movement, which is what we want. All right. Coming down, all movement occurs at a joint. Joints is where two bones meet. And the joints that you need to know about is a hinge joint and a ball and socket joint. So examples of a hinge joint are the elbow, the knee and the ankle. Okay, The bones that make up the elbow is the humerus, the radius and the ulna. The ones that make movement at the knee is the femur and the tibia. Make sure it's tibia, not tibula. Okay, it's tibia. So tibia and we don't need to know the other one, so I'm not going to confuse you yet, okay? And the ankle joint is the tibia, and here's the other one, it's the fibula. So if you fib, you lie, so you've got an L in it, if you can remember that. So tibia, fibula, and the talus, which is um, a bone in the foot, okay? And the hinge joint, we'll move on to look at the movement that occurs there. So we've got the articulating bones, the bones that move. OK, and they're all at the hinge joint. Right, moving on. Hips and shoulders are ball and socket joint. OK, so hip is the pelvis and the femur. 
they're the articulating bones and at the shoulder you have the humerus and the scapula okay happy with that let's look at movement then so we know that flexion and extension flexion is the decrease in angle of a joint or yeah where the angle uh, between the bones reduces extension okay extension is where the it's the opposite okay movement where the angle between the bones increases or increase in angle at a joint okay so making it larger um, they so the movement there occurs at both it occurs at the hinge joint which is the only two types of movement that occur at a hinge joint and the ball and socket okay so ball and socket and hinge have flexion and extension if we look here we've got abduction so moving the limbs away from the center line or midline of the body so abducting your arm outwards okay um, or abducting your leg outwards and then you've got adduction which is again just bringing those limbs back into the midline of the body all right and they only occur at a ball and socket joint so abduction and abduction adduction adding it into the body occurs at the ball and socket okay we've also got let's just keep on with ball and socket at the minute so we've got rotation okay so rotation is turning a limb along its long axis I'll say it again it's turning a limb along its long axis so just coming back ball and socket all movement occurs at the ball and socket joint so flexion extension abduction adduction and rotation all occur at the ball and socket flexion and extension only occur at a hinge joint okay and they only occur at the elbow and the knee because the ankle is slightly different and coming down here these are the two movements that occur at the ankle joint so we've got plantar flexion and dorsiflexion now if you think of plantar as pointing your toes so use the p in plantar for pointing your toes okay you should it should help you and if you if you can think of a dorsal fin on a dolphin that brings your foot towards towards the knee okay happy with that all right so then we've got to look at the type of movements or how movement occurs we've looked at the types let's look at how muscles enable movement okay so we've got to look at muscles work in pairs okay so when one contracts the other one has to relax and these this is known as an antagonistic muscle contraction so the agonist the one that is in absolute agony from working so hard is the one that's contracting okay so the agonist agony contracting okay the opposite is the antagonist the one that relaxes okay so if we look at a bicep curl here when flexion occurs at the elbow joint the bicep is short and it's bulging that's the one that's in agony all right so the bicep is the agonist the antagonist is the one that's relaxing and lengthening which in this case is the tricep okay and then we've got two other contra uh, contraction types we've got an isotonic contraction this is where movement occurs where, where the muscles um, are moving um, and isometric now if you put an A there it's where muscles stay the same length under contraction and you can see that that the muscles are working hard but they're not actually moving so that's a great example the crucifix or anything where you're holding yourself in position is an isometric contraction okay concentric contraction is where muscles change length they shorten under load and in eccentric contraction is where your muscles lengthen under load on a press up position okay where you're lowering yourself to the ground the triceps would be the one that has to act as a break okay or in when you are jumping from a box from a high box and you're bending at the uh, you're flexing at the knees the eccentric contraction 
of the quads would act as a, as a break. Okay, happy with that? All right, let's move on then. Let's break. So let's break this down then. So I've already read the question. You can read for yourself. The command word is explain. We are going to have to use these connective words. The focus we already know is movement, and the the topic is the musculoskeletal system. It's nine marks. AO1 is worth two marks, so this is just where you identify, you introduce the topic. So we know that muscles are attached to bones by tendons. Okay, we know that muscles have to work in pairs, and we know that all movement occurs at a joint. Muscles contract and they pull on the bone, and that's where movement occurs at the joint. And you can briefly explain, or you can just identify, sorry, what movement is occurring. So we know that the movement in the body that happens at joints is flexion, extension, rotation, abduction, and adduction. Okay, so that's worth your two marks. Another two marks is you have to just apply it to the focus. And the focus here is movement. So we could go into more detail about an antagonistic pair. If it doesn't give you an example, I would I would have a look at an example as well. Um, so agon uh, an agonist, you know, is the one that's the muscle that's in agony, okay, which is the one that's contracting, it's the one that shortens. They might call it a prime mover instead of the agonists. It just means exactly the same thing, okay? When the prime mover contracts, the antagonist has to relax and it lengthens. And we know that movement occurs at a joint. You could use the bicep curl, but I'm going to use a bicep curl later on in a specific question, so I'll go through that one later. Ligaments, we know... Um, attach bone to bone they keep the joint stable and avoid this dislocation so we don't want to um, have too much movement or we'd be in a lot of pain okay and cartilage ensures pain free movement we've got to always bring it back to applying it to movement AO3 so this is justifying why what you've said is right we're explaining so this is where your connective words come in so different joints have different movements we've got a hinge joint that provides flexion and extension however the ball and socket allows flexion extension abduction that should be adduction let's just change that there and rotation Okay, we've got long bones, like we said at the beginning, they um, provide big movements, and you can name some here, okay, so you've got your femur in your legs, um, you've got your quads, you've got, um, you've got your hamstrings, so don't forget, your femur is your bone, and the big muscles are the quadriceps and the hamstrings, quads at the front, hamstrings at the back, small bones, Small muscle groups, exactly the opposite, provide small movements, okay? But building that up, hopefully now you will be able to get the nine marks on that question, okay? Just from breaking down, so movement, we've applied everything and we've brought everything back and explained how that movement occurs. And we've looked at bones and we've looked at muscles and how they link in order to make the movement occur. That's been Musculoskeletal System. Goodbye for now. Happy writing.